Hi everyone, it's Pastor Lauren bringing you today's Advent devotion. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at the Christmas song, Do You Hear What I Hear? And this is a wonderful, uh, really beautiful story about how this song came to be. So I hope you'll enjoy these few moments that we have to share together today. The odds of these two people, Gloria Shane and Noel Regney, coming together were long at best, but somehow, born even worlds apart, a Frenchman and an American found each other in the middle of one of the busiest cities in the world and eventually teamed up to create this Christmas song that is truly inspired. Noel Regney grew up in Europe with a deep love of music. He was forced into the Nazi army during World War II and soon escaped to his native France where he became a resistance fighter. After the war, it was music that brought him to the United States. And in the late 1950s, he wandered into New York's Beverly Hotel and he saw a beautiful woman playing popular music on the piano. That night, he introduced himself to Gloria Shane, and within a month, they were married. On the surface, their union seemed really unique. What could an American woman determined to write rock and roll and a Frenchman who had come to the United States to record classical music have in common? Well, by 1962, Noel had mastered English and been completely exposed to the world of American popular music, thanks in large part to his wife's Gloria writing a huge rock and roll hit. While Noel saw the financial potential of popular music and heard his wife playing it nearly every day, he still wanted to create something beautiful that would last longer than just a quick trip up the charts. Noel had often prayed that World War II would be the war to end all wars. Yet his prayer was shattered, as we know, in the 1950s by the fighting in Korea. And then after Korea, Regney watched his native France and then the United States become entangled in a bloody jungle battle in Vietnam. As more and more young people became injured and killed, he wondered if the world would ever find real peace. Noel sought out something that would bring him peace of mind. In an effort to put his pain into perspective, he turned back to the one moment in time when he felt that the Lord had given people a chance to live life without hate, fear, or conflict. So picking up a pen, Noel Regney wrote a poem about the first Christmas. As he concentrated on the events that lead to the birth of Christ, the world around him grew strangely quiet. His memories took him back to a scene of sheep walking through the beautiful fields of green in his native France. He considered the innocence of a newly born lamb. This was a creature whose spirit Noel thought people should emulate. An animal that surely the creator himself had touched in a very special way. Thoughts of the Lamb and a child who might have cared for it inspired Noel to write a poem that not only described peace on earth, but which also spoke of the peace that came to earth on that first Christmas night. His wife Gloria recalled, when he finished, Noel gave it to me and asked me to write music for these lyrics. I read over the lyrics, then went shopping. She was actually going to Bloomingdale's, and when she was in Bloomingdale's, that's when she thought of the first music line. When she came back home, she discovered that she had accidentally inserted an extra note into her melody that caused her music to not fit in with the beautiful lyrics that Noel had written. 
So he listened to what she had written, and instead of having her change it, Noel opted to add a word in uh, because he didn't want to risk losing one of the most beautiful melodies he said he had ever heard. So originally, this line said, said the wind to the little lamb, and it became said the night wind to the little lamb. And not only did this keep the music intact by adding in this word, but the imagery of God speaking on the wind became even more wondrous. The couple could not have dared to imagine the effect, do you hear what I hear, would have on the nation. At the height of the Cold War, millions like Noel were yearning for peace and hope. This carol's combination of words and music powerfully voiced those prayers. Newspaper stories at the time told about people who heard the song for the first time on the radio in their car and they drove over and pulled to the side of the road so that they could stop and listen. It seemed that the song didn't just touch the world, it actually made people stop, look, and listen. In 1963, Do You Hear What I Hear became a Christmas standard when it was recorded by Bing Crosby. It was sung by church choirs, became an integral part of television specials, and has inspired numerous magazine features and even some Christmas sermons. Four decades after they sang it for their publisher, Noel and Gloria have heard hundreds of different versions of their song. While each is special in its own way, Gloria said one time that it was Robert Goulet's version that made even the songwriters step back and listen. She said, when Robert Goulet came to the line, pray for peace, people everywhere, he almost shouted those words out. It was so powerful. He'd gotten it right. That shout was exactly what Noel thought the whole world needed to be doing each day, demanding peace for all people everywhere. Over time, the hands of the woman who composed the music were silenced by an operation that kept her from playing the piano any longer. And Noel, whose past experiences brought the words to life, suffered a stroke and he could no longer speak much less sing before his own death. Yet thanks to the song that brought both Gloria and Noel to the spotlight, the message of peace on earth and goodwill to all people found in Do You Hear What I Hear touches millions of people each year. And today, we hope that it will touch you in a very special way.